Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That board, because I have nothing to do with that board. Praise God. I just give honor to God tonight to be here. Thank and praise God that he has blessed our pastor with another birthday. Amen. Amen. I think the most beautiful part of that, he's doing what he wants to do yes. on his birthday. Yes. And that's a great lesson that he has taught this, this house. That, you know, you can spare that one day to celebrate you. Amen. And I'm so glad that he's gone to Paris, but I'm so mad that I'm not, I'm not that lady that told him to put, him, put her in the suitcase, so that's not me. I would love to have been there too with my skates on, because he does not stand still. Anybody that has traveled with him, no, if you go with him, you may well, you better not get lost, because he's gone. Don't let them short legs fool you. He be moving. <laughs> he be all over the place, man, right, man. One moment there, and the next moment in there, and he's talking about something there's a vision. Well, he already spotted something that he wanted. And when he spots that item, uh, whatever it is that he wants to check into, forget it. That's his, his mind, and he's tunnel vision. That's, that's all he's thinking about right there. But he's so nice when he come back. <laughs> he's just as friendly as he want to be. Yeah. But that's the way we want it. We want him to be happy. We want him to do the things that God has blessed him to be able to do. All the persecution and the struggles that he has gone through. People look at um, his blessing, but they don't understand the process that he had to go through to get there. Man. And uh, sometimes I think about how God has been a blessing to this man of God from the time I've been here. You know, he. Um, I brought my my daughter came from uh, Chicago. <laughs> she said they, they, she said a drug, he ain't never outlived the drug deal title. <laughs> yeah. She said, but people ought to be trying to find out how he get away. <laughs> <laughs> All these years, I thought the, the CIA, the FBI, the, the private detectives, the police, none of the law enforcement was that has ever been able to catch him. Somebody need to take notes. <laughs> If he's that good, somebody need to take notes. Right. All these years, right. selling the same drugs to the same people at the same place. <coughs> I think that I, when she said that, I thought that was just so funny. She said, he will never outlive that title. He will always have that. But then instead of them talking about him, they ought to talk. They ought to ask him how he do it. <laughs> and I know that's, that's where they're going to make their biggest mistake. Amen. I don't intend to be before you too long. I am. Um, I just was looking over some of the stuff that Bishop talked about on Sunday, so that's where I'm going from. I'm called, going back to Psalm 12, Psalm 18. I'm sorry. The song of deliverance. Amen. Amen. So we're gonna go there. Well, while May is gonna get that for you, I just want to share something with you. You know. Uh, we are in a new decade, but we have to still remember what God did for us the last 10 years. Yes. We have to be mindful and thankful what God did for us those 10 years. Because if you sit back here and think about all the things that went, that took place in those last 10 years, it's just mind boggling. It's mind-boggling. Just think of the people that was here that's not anymore. Right. I'm not talking about off the face of the earth. I'm just talking about the people that you used to sit next to. Right. You know, and you had confidence that they were going to be here. Right. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. The enemy is out to steal, to rob, and to kill. Whom, and he's going for the very elect. He's not, he don't want the, the Rudy Coop. He wants the people that got some impact, some influence in the house of God. Yep. 
So he's seeking to, 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 to destroy the very elects of heaven. And I said that to tell you that just because somebody tells you or you believe that you're anointed, that does not exclude you from trials. That does not make, put a big brick wall or fort around you that the enemy can't get to you. You are not a target. Anytime God uses you, the enemy's trying to kill you. That's right. Amen. Yes, sir. See, we sit back and think, well, I made it through to, to, to 2020, and I went, you know, hallelujah. Look at what the, I was looking at, looking at what God has done for me. Not, you don't have to take this as my personal journey. I'm going to tell you what he did for me. I'm in my right mind. All the hell I've been through the last 10 years, I'm in my right mind. I still want to serve God. I still want to please God. I still want to walk with Him. I still want to serve Him. I still want to obey Him. I thank God. Because in them 10 years, I fell, I, I struggled to be, get back up, and some of you did too. He shielded me on the airplane flying all over the place. Right. Paris, right. Uh, Italy, Germany, yeah. Japan, back and forth. He shields me. Yeah. I don't take that for granted. Yeah. They just took off. That Ukrainian airline just took off. Wasn't even five minutes in the air and they were shot down. So I don't take anything God does for me. Anything you do for me, I take it personal. And our biggest problem, we think we deserve something. When I wanted to give up, he kept me. When I gave up, when, he, when I gave up, I'm going to say me. I'm not talking about you. You take your own, make your own testimony. When I gave up, I wanted to throw in the towel. He resuscitated me. He gave me life for me. And I wanted to turn and run. I got my shoes on, but I couldn't make it out the door. <laughs> he turned that thing around for me. Feeling all rejected and, and put to the back of the line and all of these things. Sometimes that's where God can meet you at. Because right. <laughs> sometimes we get so far up in the cloud, we forget to look back and see where we came from. Okay. God wants all the glory. Amen. He don't want to take it. He wants us to stop taking things for granted. Because everything he do for us, he do it because he loves us. Yeah. And he wants us to be a testimony. Yeah. Your children. We didn't, anybody in here didn't, have not buried a child in those 10 years. Can you think about that? Yeah. My grandkids came home. My children came home. My great grandkids come home. I'm grateful for God. Keep in my family. Girl, please. You this and you that. You don't know, and Satan, you don't know. Rejection made me. I, I was okay. made okay. out of rejection. I was rejected a long time ago. So you talk, turn around trying to reject me now, that ain't nothing new. <laughs> you can't tell me what I am not because I probably heard it before. Uh -huh. You can't tell me what I can't do. I probably heard that too. They said I couldn't do this. I did it. Right. They say anybody from my little home, my little, my little squash town, will be able to do the things that I did. I've done it. All right. I don't. I don't go around telling people what I want to get get done. I do it, and I don't even. I don't have to brag about it. Cause you know what? Anything you do for God, when He, when you have suffered through the consequences of suffering because of His name, but you're gonna be blessed anyway. Amen. I look around and I think, God, you, you, you just been, you know, you're so good. You've just been so good. I thank God. Look at the, the building in this house, the building up of this house, the new people that's coming in here, hungry 
Yeah. I thank God for sending us hungry people, yeah. hungry for the righteousness of God, hungry for salvation, hungry for the Holy Ghost. I'm grateful because that pumps me. It reminds me of where I came from. Because there's nobody in these seats in here did start somewhere where you are. I don't care where you are right now or where you think you started from. There's somebody sitting in this church that started somewhere where you are, somewhere about where you started, even probably worse off than you. You might have been crawling out the back window. They were falling out the back door. <laughs> you never know. You never know. So we can walk around here. But do it with a grateful heart. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Do it with a grateful heart. That's because right. God has been too good. These 3,650 days that have passed us by, God has been so We still have Mother William. We still have Mother Grace. We got wisdom on top of wisdom. We still got our dear pastor and we got his beautiful wife. We got his family, his grandchildren. We got every, we got everything God has promised us. We need to be more thankful for him. Amen? I just wanted to let you know, you know, we take, we take a lot of things for granted and we shouldn't do that. Amen? We're going to be better, right? We're going to do better the next 3,650 days. We're going to be, do better. Starting with tonight. And don't be lying because God hear you. He see y'all clapping your hands. I didn't clap my hand. No. He got y'all. Y'all was clapping. Okay. All right, mate. Let's start with verse 1. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. And my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compass me. And the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. Mm. In my distress, I called upon the Lord mm. and cried unto my God. Mm. He heard my voice Jesus, thank you. out of his temple, and my cry came before him even into his ears. Mm. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth. Devoured coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub, and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. Amen. Let's say amen. Amen. Now this is a man that is being persecuted by, once upon a time, an anointed king. Right. David was being pressured, he's being persecuted, he's being chased, he's been sought after to kill by Saul. Now Saul, like I just said, just because somebody tell you you're anointed, that don't mean that you're free from sin. You still make mistakes. You still have to stay before God. You still have to stay on your knees. You still have to repent. You still have to obey what thus says the Lord. Saul was determined to destroy David. And you know, as a king and a person that is anointed, we have a lot of power. And Paul, I mean, Saul had a lot of power going for him. But his power does nothing to, nothing to match with the power of the Lord God we serve. 
David said, he was my strength, he was my, 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 uh, my, my fortress, he was my buckler, he's my shield. All of these things, David is telling, is telling us, letting us, that's the best fact, so we can read about this, so we can learn. God is everything you need. Why do we let our situation get the best of us? We go to the, let the enemy take us like we've done something wrong. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Go to, go to work and have a supervisor that you know don't like you and you do everything in your Come on now. Do everything in your power to make sure they don't see. And saying, God is my shield. He's my fortress. He's my everything. He's my strength. I'm not going to fear man who can just, he can only kill just the body. I, why do we got so much fear of man? Paul and Saul was chasing David on every hand. But he, the more he chased David, the more blessings came David's way. That's right. The more they talk about William D. Barlow, the more he get blessed. That's right. The more they say he sell drugs, a felon, he done done that, the more you get blessed. The man can go out of his house, watch this car in his garage, and not even leave his house. Why do you think we should run away from the devil and the enemy when God got so much more for us to sin? Now he could have packed up. Our pastor could have packed up and just ran on back to Indiana. Yeah. Man, man. Yeah, we got to go. I'm going to my mama house. They just talking about me like a dog. They treat me like I'm a stepchild. And Sister Bolo was well, Ronnie, you can go, but I got the house. <laughs> I'll send you the newspaper clipping. <laughs> but no, I'm, <laughs> it's so funny. But you just think, what kind of man of God will sit back and just let somebody talk them out of their blessing? Oh, child. That, 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 that child too young to be married. So what? What were you doing at 19? Some of us don't even want to think that way, do we? <laughs> Go ahead and look up at the season. What were you doing that you know that you weren't supposed to be doing? <laughs> it sure wasn't walking down the aisle being a wife. It sure wasn't walking in no, no uh, real estate office, signing no documents to get you a house. It sure wasn't being a saved vessel that a man of God came and rescued and saved. It wasn't that. Come on, right? you. I don't know what they're doing over there at that church. Well, you come over here. <laughs> don't you just want to tell people come down? Just bring your. Just, bring <laughs> just come on. Come on. Just, 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 just come on. Just come on. You want to know what's going on? Just come, just come on. And then when they get to the door, when they get inside, have Brandon stand through the door like this. You can't go out. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what the enemy does. The enemy runs when there's nobody chasing him. That's what scripture says. Why are we running? Why are we scared? I, I tell my testimony. When I went to take, uh, went to apply for the job at SAC Credit Union, I didn't even know how to turn the computer on. <laughs> I was standing there. She <laughs> said, "When I come in the first two days, they had them on, right?" So I was like, "Yeah, a little follow my little step, do this and do this." I'm just going. I'm just <laughs> that third day I came in, that all the computers was off. 
I don't want y'all thinking that I'm thinking I'm holier than thou. Because no, I came from a long way. A long way. My mama used to have programs and stuff at church and she had the money my brother would be stealing. <laughs> she had a little envelope with money in from the little program that they had made me. My brother would be going to the shop. I'm like, where you get money from? You want some? I'll get you some. I didn't know that Negro was stealing. <laughs> I did. I didn't know he was stealing my mama money from the church. Stealing my mama money. Talking about, do I want some? <laughs> you buy? <laughs> yeah, I want some. <laughs> I'm going to get that envelope. Now that envelope say, well, $28, I guess, back in the day. It said $28 and I see it got for $8. All hell broke loose. My mama beat that nigga so bad. She, she beat him so bad he was trying to speak in tongues. Oh, save me, Jesus. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Uh-uh. No, he can save you after I whip you behind. And for some reason, he didn't outgrow it. Bless his heart. My mama, he, my mama know he coming to town. She took the carpet out the corner of the house and put it on the window. Huh? She was like, like carpet laid in the house. When she knew he was coming, she'd go and pull out her corner, put her money back in. You better not put that money under your pillow, under the mattress. That's an invitation. I have another cousin who steal that and then feed you off your money. Amar, <laughs> you want a shrimp dinner? Amar, you want a chicken sandwich? Yeah, baby. Nobody don't treat me like my children don't treat me like Juanita. No, because Juanita was stealing your money. She can afford to treat you. Family, a dad. Got one cousin. When it comes to money, it's just crazy. I don't know why. She asked me to take her to the ATM machine one day. I'm gonna say I am gonna stop. I'm getting back to where y'all gonna stop. But I got to tell you this. Because you wouldn't believe it. When I told my husband and my family, they didn't believe me. Went to the ATM machine, drove to the ATM machine, ATM machine, and how does the ATM go, Coco? 20, 10, 20 and 10? Well, nobody didn't tell my cousin. She had to cuss the machine out because she was trying to get $5. And Everything. You know, 
girls had an argument with somebody that got second grade education and they're trying to tell you something. They're trying to convince you. They know everything. And if you if you ask them to spell something, cat, T-H-E, no. I know that's how, apple, T-H-E, no. I know, I know, I know. You know what you do with people like that? <laughs> you go to the scripture. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. I don't want this Negro to say anything else that's stupid than they, what, stupider than what they just said. Amen. But that's how it is in Murder Beach and sometimes. It gets like that. Sometimes I get to argue with my aunt. My aunt. Sometimes I argue with my sister. Sometimes we get it. Because I'm watching animals. It just don't equate. It just does not add up. That's what the enemy will do to you. When he got you in darkness, he keep you, he puts you further and further and further from the truth. Ain't nobody laughing now. So as soon as he knows he got you on the line, he puts you further and further away from the land so that he can drown you in your situation. When you get a fish on the line, smart people, they reel them in. You know what I'm saying? They get on the line, you make sure the hook is set, and you reel them in. Not like me, snatch them in and just look for them. <laughs> All right, Chris, come help me find this line. <laughs> but you reel them in. When you're trying to save a soul, when you're trying to reach a soul, you don't skin them and scale them in the water. Right. You bring them in. You reel them in. That's right. Gently. Yeah. Making sure you've got the line. Right. you got them hooked the right way with your love. Yeah. Hallelujah. Then you make sure that you're giving them enough line that they won't drown and they won't get out. But you keep reeling them in. Because that's a soul that God assigned to you. That's why you had the right bait to get them on the line. But you don't take the, 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 the word of God because it's not working and throw it in the lake because it's not working for you. You just keep on keeping on. My kids not saved. I don't try everything I throw in. I can't take it no more. Look at God. If, he, if God would have thought about you and your silly self. You know you had it going on. Dress up in here. Trying to be cute. Frostbite. <laughs> trying to be cute. Doing everything we can to be noticed. I know I'm not the only woman that's been there. I want somebody to notice me because I, I, apparently there is nobody watching me now. And you do all of that, and when you get it right, you look and say, it was that easy? You mean to tell me all I had to do is give my life to God and trust God and he would have fixed this up for me? You mean to tell me I would have had an education paid for if I would have just listened to God? You mean to tell me I would have a family? Even though I don't have a family, I would have a family in the house of God that would love me, support me, cherish my dreams, push me to my dreams. You mean all I had to do is give it all to Jesus? How many times we've turned around because we thought, I'm not, I'm not, I can't do this no more. I said, I ain't going back to that church no more. As I get off for the uh, exit <laughs> and end up in the parking lot, I, I know I was in there. I said, I wasn't coming here. <laughs> but I say you were. This is what I said to. I hope I'm not the only person who can testify that God, I thought I was in the will of God and God had to check me. Check me. Who do you think you are? You were chosen, but I'm not going to bend my rules for you. That's right. 
I'm not going to say yay when I already said nay. You better get your behind in line. I don't care what it feels like across town. That ain't where I told you to go. And we look for an easy way. You know, we don't, we, God forbid we have to go across the street. God forbid we got to, man, so. We don't want to suffer. We don't want to go through anything. We don't want to endure. We just want God to hand it out. He, it's like a deck of cards. Just dish it out to me, Lord. Just deal me a good hand. But how many messed up hands do you get in, in uh, what other games are? Tom, Tom Spades, Ben Wear, Rami. How many bad hands you get before you get a good hand? Now, Coco, get, uh, Coco always get a good hand. She, you still carry your cards. <coughs> You still carry a card. You've got to have a good hand. <laughs> That's all safe back there. That's all safe bad back there. Some cards. Are... But this is, we don't want to go through anything. Oh, man. man bitch, you see that card bitch you got? But you wasn't there when he was crying. He wasn't there when he was in the his, his, the carpet was in his the beard was in his carpet the carpet was in his beard you know what I'm talking about you wasn't there you wasn't there when he wanted to give up when he looked around and he thought that there was not going to be no success story one time they was leaving the church left and right nobody wanted to stand everybody stood and claimed to be saved as soon as they graduated from high school. No more. I'm talking about a whole class. I know that had to hurt the man of God. Just push, give, give, teach. Push, give, give, teach. As soon as they get a little air on the behind, they hit the street. And all of a sudden, it cracks me up. This is what this is the one thing that cracks me up. No, I should say it like I want to say it. What pisses me off? They always get out there and then start talking about the man of God. What he didn't do, what the church didn't do. We wipe your nasty, snotty nose when your mama was at the altar praying. We picked you up when you were falling and your mama was busy doing something else. We get a lot of things for you. That you can't give us credit for. But then God heard the man of God cry. He said, I'm going to give you double for your trouble. Keep pressing. Keep doing what you do. Keep teaching. Keep leading them. Keep giving that word to them. Keep teaching them. Somebody's listening. Somebody is hearing you. Somebody is hearing you. Come here. She went away, but look at her now. Woo! Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. She went away, but she can't look where she is now. Look where she is now. The proof that the word did not go out for her. It will not return until him forth. God has the lesson in this house. Come here, Erica. Still here. A word came forth. A word came forth. And the word of God kept him. The word of God walked with him. The word of God kept him. Look at Satan. Look at her baby now. Look at what God has done. He gave them double for the trouble.
and not from Coca-Cola Company University. From how? University of Southern California. because of what went on in this house. To McQueen, to McQueen. When the road got rough and the battle got tough, she cried. I said she cried, but she didn't give up on her children. She cried, but she didn't get up on her faith. She cried, but she didn't give up on her faith. She kept on pushing.
Hallelujah. Come, come, come. I wouldn't even be doing a good service if I didn't remember this one here. Shy, kind of quiet, but God got something for you. God has not forgotten about you. God has not forgotten about you. You pray for people that don't even know you're praying for them. She came to me one day, she said, I don't know why, but the Lord has led me to pray for your husband. I said, honey, don't stop. Don't stop. He needs it. But I'm telling you, she's faithful. She's faithful. And she's, led, she, she's legible. You can read it. She's legible. She's on top of things. I thank God. Because I know for a fact like the last decade brought her some tears. The last decade brought her some disappointment. But we thank God that the 2020. This is 2020. We're getting up a new decade. And we pray that God will touch her right now. We thank God for promotion. We thank God for relationship. We thank God for a closer walk with him. We thank God for your children being blessed. Thank God, thank God, thank God. In the name of Jesus, God. Thank you, Jesus. She's in a money machine. And money just flying all around. You know, like the wind blow the money, and it's just flying. being in our lives. He goes out of the way to make sure that we're blessed and protected. I thank God for this house. I thank God for this house. We might have a lot of family problems, but we ain't got no Jesus problem over here. We might have a sister that looks fine and we want to look, take a second look, but that's all right, keep looking. You leave them hamburgers alone, you'll be fine too. <laughs> Praise God. We're just going to bless the Lord tonight because of all of his benefits. We know that God is able. We know that God's promises will be fulfilled. There's no doubt. There's no doubt this is going to be a, a phenomenal, a phenomenal decade. Thing. We got this, this generation here coming up with all this wisdom they made. All of the correction and the obedience, them just following what the word matter, what the man of God has told them and taught them. If you follow what he said, you will not go wrong. Because he has not whispered one thing to you to make you fail. Everything he say to you is to make you successful, to make you shine, to make you do the things that everybody else say you can't do. Amen? Amen? They said I would never make it. They said I wouldn't last. But thank you, Jesus. They don't have the final say so. They said I wouldn't make my, my oh, are you, are you marrying a GI? Oh, girl, you know how they are. You know, I learned a lot about how they are, but I tell you what, they didn't know who I was. Right. The difference, I made the difference. Amen. I made the difference. I'm the one that made the difference. See, everybody can't get crazy at the same time. Somebody got to have a little bit of sense. And always got to, you know, got that crew that, 
uh, I got to get 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 this, get this get this off of my I got to get this off of my chest. No, you don't. Change bra. <laughs> get another T-shirt. Get one that really fit. You don't have to get that off your chest. I got to give them a piece of my mind. You can't afford it. I got to tell them. No, you don't. See, you what happen when people? I got to always. I got to tell. I got. I got. You. When you got to do it, then you tell God, sit down. <laughs> I got this. And when you go out there and flip over back and, and you, you start seeing things spin around, that's because somebody knocked a piece out of you. Because you can't let God give you the word to say in the time to say it. Because let me tell you something. You might be right, but you can be alone and right. You might be right, and you can be dead right. See, that's, that's not the way to go. Learn how to speak at the appropriate time. Because every one of your opinions don't mean nothing. Everybody got one. You found, you got friends that want to get on board to, you know, back the house of God. If you come back and tell them what, what they said, I want to know why you listen that long. <laughs> what were you doing listening that long? They had to feel comfortable for you to tell them that. <laughs> the Bible said, how can two walk together except they what? Agree. So I'm going to start telling you my secrets if you ain't told me none of your way. Now y'all know that's the truth. Just somebody come telling you, well, you know, so and so said as uh, who is so and so anyway? You know, such and such said such and such and such and such. Girl, I don't know what she. Mm -hmm. and she told you all of that. Well, what did you say? I didn't say nothing. I was just letting you lie. <laughs> Girl, they say your pastor uh, sell drugs and, 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 and do the club and. and uh, Okay. Where were they at? How did you know he was at the club? Either you was at the club, or you trying to figure out, if I'm going to tell you that, I know he was at the club. Right. Conversation has just ended. Right. Sometimes listening too long can cost you. I don't dislike nobody that left this church. I love them dearly. But let one of them fools make the mistake of trying to have a conversation with me. If they ain't talking about love, they ain't talking about Jesus, they ain't talking about salvation, we don't have nothing in common. Right. You can get so entangled with things that will stifle you, cause you to miss out on the blessings of God because you, what? The word of God said, faith come by what? Hearing. Faith come by what? Hearing. So you sit there and hear that God is a faith come by what? Hearing. What you heard. And I don't care what you say. If you listen long enough, it'll reflect the way you look at people. Not me, Sister Bradley. I'm a strong man. That's right. Strong. I had no idea what God was going to do. Matter of fact, I came to church scared because I had no idea what God was going to do. But this is what God wanted to do. Yeah. And I'm done. Because yeah. God has done what God wanted to do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Sitting out here until they start stealing. 